Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. In this week's video, we are doing a full review of the EDC Pocket Trauma Kit by Live the Creed. All right guys, so like I just said, this week's video is all about the Pocket IFAC which is made by a company called Live the Creed LTC. Um, this is a really cool design, and the reason that I'm really interested in this is because if you've been following this channel for uh, any amount of time, you know that generally in the winter, I carry an ankle trauma kit, and this is the Dark Angel Medical ankle trauma kit. I carry you know, a tourniquet, chest seal, uh, and some packing gauze in there, and I have really enjoyed this. This is one of my favorite kits of all time, um, for everyday carry. However, for obvious reasons, this kit does not work so well in the summer when you have shorts on. So I needed to find something else uh, that was going to work for me. And that I, I kind of stumbled upon these guys on accident, reached out to them, see if they'd be interested in supplying one uh, for this channel to be reviewed and used. And they obliged. So we're going to open this kit up. I'm going to tell you guys kind of the specifications of the kit, how much it costs, what comes in it, and then we're going to go over some uh, pros and cons of this. So on the exterior, this is made with a very tough uh, nylon material, I believe. And then this here is, I, I don't even know what it is. It doesn't say on their website, but it's some kind of synthetic material, almost like uh, rubber. You've got a little hole here for uh, clipping that to a pack or hanging it off something. And then on the back, you have this laser cut webbing. You can take a malice clip and actually put this onto Molly webbing, uh, hook it on a pack or something like that. But as it comes, it's just as flat as can be. This has a Velcro closure on the top that comes open. And then it basically has two compartments on it. So these are both bungee elastic cords that go over your contents, hold it in place. Um, on the cover of it, you've got a couple things. You've got these gloves here. And these are um, just heavy duty uh, latex gloves or non-latex gloves, probably uh, nitrile. Not a whole lot to say about those. We have uh, Celox Rapid rib Ribbon, which is uh, Z-fold hemostatic gauze. Um, Celox is approved by the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care as a hemostatic agent. And this is just Z-fold gauze. So regardless of how you feel about hemostatic agents, this will work just fine because you pack it into a wound just like you would um, your normal gauze. So I really like this because it is very thinly packaged and it's really easy to carry in something like this kit. Uh, it really doesn't add a whole lot of bulk. Some of the combat gauze packaging is pretty bulky and I don't think it would fit in this quite as well. So this is a really cool product uh, and I really like that they've put that in this kit. On this side, you got a couple things and um, this is one of my favorite things in this kit and something that I think a lot more first aid kits should include. This is just your micro first aid kit is what they call it. Um, similar to the uh, ouch pouch from Active Carry Technologies that I really like, this has your everyday use items. So this isn't you know your life-saving stuff, but in here you've got some uh, Band-Aids, you've got an iodine wipe, alcohol wipe, and some bacitracin ointment. Um, along with some wound closure strips, so some Steri strips in there. And this is really cool because, you know, chances of you using this stuff is slim to none. Chances of using this is pretty much all the time. So this is just a great thing to have on you, you know, come to the rescue and your wife or kid has a scrape and you can actually do something about that. So I really like that this is in here. Um, it's in a pretty heavy duty Ziploc bag, but really nothing special about it. And then the final item in here is going to be your SWAT T, your stretch wrap and tuck tourniquet. I've talked a lot about these. Um, you know, these are not approved by the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care. They do have a lot of studies on them. These are a really great uh, tourniquet to apply to somebody else. And they're great to be carried as a backup tourniquet. Where these fall short is self-application. They're very hard to do on your own and they take a little bit more time, practice and training than say your cat um, or your uh, soft T wide. So this is great because it is so small, but at the same time, you do lose a little bit of functionality. So that's where you're a little bit of sacrifice for the um, 
the size of this kit, it, this is kind of the sacrifice you're making for that. All right, so what do I really like about this kit? So for one, I really like the form factor. Um, you know, this is great because you can take this and you can just put it in your back pocket just like a wallet. Now they market this and say that, you know, it's just as big as a, as a wallet is. Um, it really isn't, and I'll get to that in a second when we're going through cons, but really truly this will fit in any pants pockets, maybe not skinny jeans, but you know, I wear uh, relatively loose fitting jeans and they go in the back pocket just fine. They'll go in the front pocket a little bit harder and they look a little bit strange, but uh, it can be done. But where these this really fits well is like in a cargo pocket if you've got cargo shorts on or like a, a side pocket or even the uh, back pocket on some cargo pants this fits really well into and you'll just feel like you're carrying a little bit of a bigger wallet the other nice thing about this with the form factor is you can just take this throw it in a backpack throw it in a glove compartment and you're not even thinking of it which is really their intention here is to have something that is super easy and accessible so you're going to carry it where you go you know, people aren't going to carry something that's uncomfortable or burdensome, which is why I really like the ankle kit because I can put this on at the beginning of the day and completely forget about it. And I'm really hoping that this will be the same. I'm going to be carrying this uh, for the next couple months and really testing it out to see how I like carrying it um, and some of the best ways to hold it. So another huge pro for this kit is going to be the uh, pack itself, its design and its durability. This feels very sturdy. I don't have any worries about this coming apart except for one part, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but this is super sturdy and it looks pretty slick. It's not overly tactical and it comes in a bunch of different colors. So if this wolf gray isn't your thing, you can get it in uh, multi-cam black with a wolf gray, gray tab here. Um, you can get it in the coyote uh, with a red tab and then you can get it in black with the red tab as well. And, uh, you know, it just gives you a little bit more options with it, and they all look pretty good, to tell you the truth. Uh, price point isn't too bad. It's about $74, which um, really a lot of that is going to be, you know, a kit that includes hemostatic, uh, hemostatic agent. You know, this ups the price quite a bit. Um, and then just the assembly and the kit, you know, I, that's pretty par for the course. I don't think it's cheap, but I wouldn't say that it's uh, overly expensive or price gouging by any means. Now, finally, the other nice thing about this is that it's very easy to use one-handed, and that's a uh, sore point with a lot of kits. It can't be used one-handed. They're hard to open. This, you can grab in your back pocket, grab this tab, and it will fall open in your hands, and it's really easy to get at the contents. Some other ones require two hands to do it, so if you don't have one hand, that's going to be a problem for you. So I really like the ease of use of this kit. Now for a couple cons, so overall I really like this, but there are a couple things I'm a bit worried about. I haven't had this for very long, so I don't really know if this will break or not, so this is more of a hypothetical con. But this tab here is super thin, um, and it doesn't feel super sturdy. I don't really know what this material is, um, but I'm just a little bit worried about this wearing out or catching on something and breaking. So we'll see where that goes. Um, the other con is, is that while this is a great form factor, and I think right now it's one of the best on the market uh, because it's only a little bit thicker than your SWAT T, it, it is still just a little bit bulky. Um, you know, I switched to a very small wallet just because I was running into problems like sitting down and being kind of at an angle and it hurting my back. This is a very large wallet if it's in your back pocket, so I do find myself taking this out of my pocket before I sit down. Um, so it, it's just not quite thin enough to be completely comfortable in your back pocket. So, um, you know, I don't think there's a whole lot they can do about that. Uh, and it's just something you have to get used to. And I've already gotten used to it, especially if you keep it in the side pocket of like cargo pants, you're just not going to notice it. But if you are using it as a wallet, uh, type trauma kit, then it is going to get a little bit uncomfortable for you. One thing you can do to make it a little bit thinner is you can actually just take these gloves out of it and that will decrease a little bit of the thickness. I know a lot of people are big on the gloves and I get that. Um, your skin most of the time is a really good barrier for bloodborne pathogens. And you know, unless you have an open cut, your chances of infection are pretty low. Because this is a low frequency use kit, I generally don't carry gloves on my EDC kits because it just takes up space and adds some weight 
that could be saved. And I really kind of value the convenience of it more than I do the potential uh, for that. And that's a choice that everybody's going to have to make for themselves. I can't tell you don't carry gloves because they are a good idea if you have them. But it's not, I don't think it's quite as big of a deal as people make it seem. You know, if there's a massive hemorrhage, I'm going to do what I have to do, uh, regardless if I have gloves or not. And that brings me to the final, uh, what I'd say is a quote unquote con of this kit. Um, you know, that's the SWAT T. Now, everyday carry is all about, you know, sacrifice for convenience. Um, I would always want to be carrying a soft T wide or a cat, something that's TCCC approved because they're better for self aid. However, when you're looking for something that's really compact that fits in your pocket, those tourniquets are relatively bulky and they're not going to work as well. So the SWAT T is great. But just know this isn't your best choice for tourniquets. Um, there are still some studies uh, that are kind of non-conclusive with this on loosening um, and some issues there. Uh, one nice thing is this is a very uh, multi-tool of a tourniquet. It can be used as a uh, pressure dressing among some other things. So it is very useful in that regard, but it's just hard for self-aid. So that's why I can't fully endorse the SWAT T because uh, it does leave a little bit uh, to be desired in that aspect. If you guys are interested in picking one of these up for yourself, there's a link down in the description where you can buy this from uh, LTC. They've also supplied a coupon co code for followers, so I'll leave that down as well. I think it'll get you 10% off, so save you a little bit of money on this. All in all, I think this is a great product. Um, I'm going to be carrying it uh, pretty much nonstop for the next couple months, and uh, just seeing how it works for an everyday carry uh, trauma kit. Right now, for the week or so I've had it, I've really liked it, been carrying it on the job and off duty, and haven't had any issues. So, if you have any questions about anything I talked about today, please leave them down below, and I will see you guys next week.